everybody to our uh, uh, quarantine edition of the uh, Black Art and Culture uh, podcast uh, with uh, me. I'm Scott Terry, and we have a, a really phenomenal uh, guest here with us today, uh, this evening. Um, this is the one and only Mr. Steve Allen. And um, before before we get into the uh, the Q and A, you know, Steve, I just want to tell everyone about. Uh, about the gallery a little bit. Uh, Mahogany Gallery is located in uh, in uh, Kenosha, um, uh, Wisconsin, and uh, we have um, recently um, moved. So we'll be moving, or we're, we're in that process. And with the uh, issue of um, the uh, coronavirus going on right now, um, everything is pretty much standstill. So what we've been doing is giving opportunities for our, for our other artists to. Um, uh, for people to get to know artists and talk with them and, and uh, see their work and learn more about who are who the artists are. So um, this is why we have started to have Steve. So welcome, Steve. Uh, thank you for having me. All right. So so Steve, you're you're a busy guy, man. You got you do a lot of stuff, man. You got you got a lot of stuff going on. And uh, I was reading uh, you know your bio and you know what you've done. Um, over the past, I don't know how many, what, decades, right? Uh, yeah, I started painting in 92 at the ripe old age of 38. 92, wow, that was, man, that's what's up. So what what, what made you get into it? Why, what made, what made you get into it? Such a you know, later age. I uh, moved back, uh, back east. Uh, I was in Los Angeles in 92 during the uh, Rodney King uprising. Okay. And I uh, said, well, to my son, 14 at the time, what, what are we doing here? And uh, so I uh, came back home, went back to DC where uh, I'd lived for years. And uh, after a few months, decided to come on down to uh, to Atlanta. I had been here uh, when I was like 18 years old. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, I just up and came on down and uh, got a job uh, working as a copier technician. Uh, a few months after that, uh, the boss wasn't talking right. I gave him his job back. Uh, and literally that morning I was a technician. I went to the unemployment office. And then that afternoon I started painting. First painting I ever did was called uh, Come Monday. Wow, Come Monday? Just you like still, that. You still, have, you still have that? You still have copies of it, or? Yeah, I still have copies of it. Yeah. I, in fact, it was the first piece I ever sold for six hundred dollars. Wow. Uh, to, wow. So how that how that make you feel as you know your first time doing a painting and then you were able to sell it? Like, how did it make you feel? Well, by my being such a novice at it, I didn't know what to feel. I was uh, happy with the six hundred dollars. Yeah. Uh, since I had never had any aspirations to be an artist, never. It's just something I could do. And uh, growing up in North Carolina in the 60s, I was born in 1954. Uh, you can do the math. I'm 65 now. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, I never, uh, it was never anything that crossed my mind to do. And uh, when I came here in 92, uh, my then, uh, uh, lady friend, Sylvia, to, to the National Black Arts Festival. And as I was walking through, I said, well, hell, I can do that. Yeah. A couple of months later, when the boss wasn't talking right, I, that day, I, it all happened in one day. Yeah. That's how I got started. Wow. And, and the rest is history, right? <laughs> I, uh, I guess you could put it like that. Yeah. You know, I didn't, I didn't know enough to be afraid or, or know what the journey well, even what it was to be an artist, I just started. And my yeah. thing was uh, push come to shove, but I always knew how to fix these uh, copiers and whatnot, so I can always get a job. So. Right, you know, right. Absolutely. You can always get a job if you need to. But that's, that kind of shows, like, um, you know, the the importance of, of art in the creative process, because, you know, you use it as a way to, you know, uh, overcome the condition of, that you were in at that time. It was an opportunity. Right? Yes. Yeah. So, have you, uh, before that time, did you know any other black artists? Were, were any, anybody in your circle, or any family members, or as smart as you may have followed or something? You know, the only black artist uh, that I knew was 
uh, Henry O. Tanner uh, sure. in his painting, the uh, the banjo lesson. The banjo, yeah, yeah, banjo lesson, yeah. Yeah, I grew up in Raleigh, North Carolina, and uh, uh, in the projects, Walnut Terrace, and literally within walking distance was the North Carolina Museum of Art. Uh, I went up there one time, uh, got a whipping when I got back because at nine years old, I wasn't supposed to be uptown as we call it. <laughs> and uh, that, that was my art education. And uh, so even at 38, I knew more, some more. Uh, when I went to the uh, Black Arts Festival, I didn't even know it was, there was such a thing. It took uh, Sylvia to uh, come to visit from Los Angeles uh, to take me there, wow. even though it was right down the street. Wow. I didn't even know right. what they Right down the street. And that's a, that's a pretty big festival, isn't it? Yeah, at the, especially at the time. Yeah. Uh, we were talking 92. It had just started in 88, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, it was literally, again, the national uh, showcase for African-American artists and their work. Uh, now uh, there's been a, a transition. Uh, it's no longer a uh, festival, so to speak. Even uh, They've changed the name. It's still NBAF, National Black Arts, is what it is now. And I was mm -hmm. fortunate enough uh, last year during the gala, during that time to have uh, one of my pieces featured as the uh, signature piece uh, for the gala and everything surrounding that, uh, that uh, piece called Io Lottie. Absolutely, yeah. I, I didn't know how to pronounce that, but I know exactly uh, the piece you're talking about. So we, we, uh, we're gonna add that picture of that piece uh, when we finish putting this together. Um, so, but speak a little bit about that piece. Ah, uh, one of the things with me, I do very complicated pieces as you see. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and all of that is done by hand. A lot of people think when they see the whole pieces that I did it digitally, but it's all uh, by I drew it in uh, with my exacto knife and I cut it out and paint and da 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 right, da. Right, right. It's uh, the mother piece. Uh, that's uh, the things that I do now I call them mother paintings. And that's where that, uh, after they are done, I'll break them down and create new pieces out of it, derivative works off of these pieces. So the okay. actual uh, first piece, the mother piece is called uh, Mawasi Yakumu Ilade. That is uh, Lingala from uh, DR Congo. And it means uh, queen mother, uh, a queen Ilade. And so I uh, took, uh, sort of deconstructed the piece and I used her bust uh, and then the backgrounds that you see, uh, I've, uh, those are out of the original piece. So uh -huh. I've created like 10, 12, I, it's just endless backgrounds out of these one pieces. Yeah. You lament the fact that I don't paint fast. You know, some artists paint very fast. Uh, this piece took me almost six months every day. Uh, wow. Yeah. But then I thought about it. I said, well, I'm not doing just one piece. I'm doing hundreds of pages. Right. <laughs> all at the same time. <laughs> and uh, so that's uh, that's where that piece came from. So the version that uh, for the uh, uh, NBAF, uh, I have about 10 versions. What I've done is changed the backgrounds. Okay. And all of the backgrounds are out of the original painting. Okay, understood. So that similarity. You're, there it is, but it's a little different. And then I do each one something hand embellished. So they all really new pieces. Uh, Absolutely, that's that's amazing. You know when I when I saw the uh, uh, the three black women, uh, when, I, when I saw that, you know, come in to the gallery. You know, it's different when you see a picture of it, right? I mean, uh -huh. and you know, we see photographs of it. You know, we see it on social media, but but when you see it in person. It's just, uh, just awe-inspiring, man, and it's just it just really captures you, and it makes you really just stay in tune to what's what's going on in the piece because it takes you all over the place. The piece takes you—I mean, all your work, you know—it takes you all yeah. over the place because there's so much. You know, as as another artist, I can really appreciate you know the the craftsmanship that goes into that. 
me and well you may notice that the original is behind me yeah i, I see that i see that <laughs> so this is a you know that's just such a phenomenal piece man not just that piece but um i can kind of speak to that one because i'm i, I kind of i have somewhat of a personal connection to that because it was in our gallery and, and yeah. uh you know I, I saw it you know all the time and you know every time you like to me every time i saw it i saw something different and I, you know, noticed something different and something that really uh, resonated with me. So when you really like, you know, look into it, there's so many layers to it. And uh, that's yeah. why I said to that, you know, I had to ask you, I was like, you know, Steve, how, how did you do this, man? You know, and I, and I, I, I was always under the impression that, um, that it, it was not even humanly possible, you know, just to get so, in depth and in tune and, and uh so crisp and with the execution so i just gonna tell you that from a you know from a from one artist to another artist man just the, the craftsmanship and the skill level of that execution is just you know it's just amazing absolutely unbelievable so i want to give you a you know shout out for that but that's that's really uh really amazing well um, i thank you for that no. and you know it's it, they they end up complicated but they actually, uh, I, I, I work from the notion of the elegance of simplicity, okay. okay? If you look closely, you will see that all it's made up of is the five basic shapes in geometry. Circle, oval, square, rectangle, and triangle. Ah. Look in there, you will see it repeated over and over and over again. And what I do is I, do one layer then i do another layer again from the simple to the more complex and that's how i get what i get wow so he's starting mm -hmm. off simple and simple <laughs> that's cool man that's cool it's like elemental you know like gold is gold you can't break gold down anymore uh, right. uh any <laughs> of the elements is, that's what it is right hydrogen is hydrogen right Right. Yeah. Right. And so that's what I'm doing. That's that's yeah. the the way I work. That's cool. So that's so that's generally like your thought process when you uh when you approach new work. Is that kind of like your what we always draw from? Yes. Uh, again, with me, I sometimes it appears to me in my maturing that uh, we overcomplicate things. We sometimes it appears to me to have lost the ability to think simply. Mm. What is it? I uh, have a program with the foundation. We have, I think we'll be talking more about that. Mm -hmm. It's called What Do You See? The Art of Seeing. What do you see? And it's not just with this art, but in uh, mathematics, uh, just everyday life when you walk out the door. What do I see? And how will I approach this? Am I going to uh, think of it as such a complex experience that I, uh, I'm like daunted, it's daunting, I don't even want to walk out the door? Or can I say, okay, today will manifest itself however it's going to manifest itself. That's going to help anyway. Right. Uh, uh, right. I, I walk out here and trust that I'm uh, able to, uh, in my elemental thinking able to break down what I'm looking at, what's going on here. Wow, that's pretty powerful. That, that's pretty powerful. And I think, uh, I'm talking about pain here, but I think, uh, you know, as a as an artist, you know, you say, you know, what do you see? You know, like for me, when I'm, you know, when I'm creating my thing, my, my work, um, one of the things that I'm really kind of, really cognizant of is like what I'm seeing is, the relationships, right? You know, the, the relationships of, like for instance, you know, when you're working on a portrait or a facial or, you know, some sort of, you know, human form, you know, mm -hmm. it's all about the relationships. You know, the relationship between, you know, the eyes to the nose and the nose to the mouth and the ear to the eyes. And, yeah. and when you start like recognizing that and you see that and, and, and mm -hmm. it's different in everybody, but there's, mm -hmm. there's commonalities. Um, right. And that's what, like for me, that's one of my sort of guiding, you know, principles is always looking at the the relationships. And when you start looking at those, 
the picture becomes clear as opposed to just, you know, laying out, okay, I lay my line right here, I want to do this line right here, and, you know, you, you look you look at it from a 30,000 foot view before mm-hmm. you really delve into the, uh, you know, details. So that's like, you know, so when you say that, that's really, that really resonates uh, with me, and I'm sure that resonates with other artists too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you uh, speaking about that, um, the, the that ability to break it down. Okay, you were talking about a face uh, or a human body. Even in even in this human body, it's still these shapes that we are talking about. Your nose is basically right. a triangle. Absolutely. Your mouth is yeah. basically an oval. Yeah. Okay, it's the same thing. Absolutely. And, yeah. And so when we approach it from that, that's how I approach it. And then what I, I, I heard a, a term I was familiar with, but it didn't make the connection. It's uh, the idea of the the end result being more than the sum of its parts, right? Right. Like an, an, emerg- that's what it, an emerging property. You start with this. And I, I don't put Steve, in fact, I take Steve out of the way. Yeah, I pick yeah. the spot and then I just let it go. Just and that, it and it's such, it, this thing is a, uh, when I see it, it's a, wow, that's <laughs> just right. like uh, when uh, you uh, took part of um, three black women and made the, uh, the, uh, the flyer for the, uh, right. The, the so I'm yeah. scrolling. I'm scrolling, and then it came by, and I said, "Wow, damn!" And then it took a minute. Wait a minute, that's that's mine. <laughs> that's mine, right? Okay. Uh, and so, as part of that deconstructing, we uh, when I was in Brazil, after you may have seen it, uh, we uh, created out of that piece uh, some beautiful designs. We take flip, dap, 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 and. Now we uh, introduced some of our new uh, fundraising uh, merchandise. Yeah. To help, uh, oh, yeah. In fact, uh, I'm drinking out of one of the cups right now. Okay. okay well, I mean, you know, I got to get a couple, so I'm going to go ahead and put my orders in too, man. I'm going right. to put my orders in. So, uh, yeah, that, they turned out really beautiful, man. So, you talk, so talk about that a little bit, uh, about the, you know, the design of those, of those mugs. Well, uh, you were speaking earlier about how comp- how the pieces are. You see a part here, then you look again and you see something else. And so that's, I'm using that concept. We I just take part out, it doesn't matter where, just take a part out and just make a design. Uh, my good, uh, good friend in Rio, uh, Maria Julia Fajera, uh, one of the greatest uh, graphic designers in Brazil, fabulous work. Uh, she did these first two designs, no, about three, uh, when I was there. And so what I'm bringing back is samples that she made while we were, wow. while I was down there. That's cool. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah. So so tell me about, um, you know, part of this, a uh, well, big part of this this talk is about you know, black culture and how, how it's connected to art. So when you when you see, and vice versa, um, when you went to Brazil, what did you see? Like, what what was, um, you know, really struck with you in terms of black culture in Brazil and connected, in connection to, you know, the arts? Mm-hmm. That, I, I need to go back to 2005, which is the first time I went to Brazil. And me, like, uh, well, I, like many other people, had little knowledge of Brazil, and I'm thinking that the people uh, would be the girl from Ipanema. We oh, all know yeah, the girl. Right, from right, Ipanema, right. Right. And I was so surprised when I arrived and to see all these black people. And then to, oh, these Afro-Brazilians are over half the country. Mm. But you never saw that. Mm. And so during that first trip, we uh, we were in Rio for uh, uh, maybe about a week. And then we went to uh, Bahia, Salvador, uh, the state of Bahia, uh, 80% black population. Mm. And as I'm there and moving around, the only difference was I'm speaking English 
they speak in Portuguese. Okay. Wow. You so, so you see so uh, people look just like you. And right. Me. Just like me and you. <laughs> okay. Portuguese. Where is the girl speaking Portuguese? I'm we wow. uh they uh I, I went to a lot of the social uh venues. Uh again, they we are moving like each other. We, we are black people. We just got dropped right. off. They got dropped off in Brazil. And then, right, they, you right. know, they still up to the Caribbean and, and right. my folks got dropped off in North America. Right, right, right. Yeah, but that really came into focus uh, for me during that time. That's, uh, that's really, uh, I think that's a story in the history that not too many people know about, you know? And, and when we talk about the connection, you know, like you just said, you know, like we're the same, you know, they just got dropped off in a different location than, than we did. And, right. they, you know, for all of them, they could be our cousins and, uh, you know, you know, mothers and fathers and grandparents right. and, you know, and through the generations of, you know, we've gotten distances ourselves though, but, um, that's how I've always been curious to, you know, to to know that and uh, to understand that. And I think that um, that's beautiful, man. That's, that's really, uh, that's really beautiful. Well, you know, one of the things with that, we were talking about speaking a different language. If I don't open my mouth, uh, people think I'm uh, Afro-Brazilian. Just like uh, when I spend time in DR Congo, uh, until I open my mouth, they think I'm Congolese. Okay, wow. <laughs> this type of thing. Wow. Wow. Again, it really drives the point home. And artistically, uh, where that was one of your main points with that, you really see the similarities between our work. We are doing things, and, and this really struck home with me when I first went to Congo, uh, in Chassa, that we are doing similar work, but we, me as an African-American artist, I didn't know where it came from, but it's all just part of what uh, what and who we are from that time, even though uh, we were removed from uh, 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 Mother Africa for hundreds of years, that is still, uh, the spirit is still in us. Mm -hmm. what we do. Yeah, mm -hmm. the similarities are wonderful, uh, just fantastic. Um, so, when you went to, so what was the initial motivation for going to Brazil? Like, why did you, what was, why did you go there? What was the, what was when the I, uh, That's funny, this happened when I came back from uh, the Olympics in Torino. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was a uh, part of the uh, Sister Cities committees here in Atlanta. I was uh, uh, on the uh, Lagos Atlanta Sister City Committee. Uh, Rio is one of the, uh, uh, Atlanta's sister cities. Are you okay. feeling? Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Okay. And so uh, the uh, trip was organized, the sister city there to uh, to uh, work with the chapter in Rio. And that's how I got down there. That's how my first trip. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So, so that's a good segue, man. There, there were also in the bio, I saw you were involved with. Um, a few Olympics and doing uh curating some uh being commissioned to create some artwork for uh various things. What do you speak about that? Well, I've I've been a fisher artist and associated with eight Olympic Games. Wow. Okay. In fact, uh two of my uh paintings, uh the painting I did for Athens in two thousand and four and Torino in uh two thousand six are part of the founding and permanent collection in the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington. Wow. Along with two other paintings of mine. Wow, I didn't know that. So when the museum, they'll see your work. Yeah, mm -hmm. and like I say, in fact, uh, the uh, pieces were acquired by the museum in 2013, even before it opened. Wow. And, yeah, it's and like I say, it's part of the founding collection. Wow, that's amazing, man. So, and just to think, you know, you started off, you know, fixing copiers and you decided to uh, <laughs> do a painting <laughs> for six hundred dollars and now you, you know, you, you progressed uh, over your career to that. That's pretty, that's a pretty impressive story, Steve. That's a pretty, yeah, pretty yeah. impressive story. 
the creator and the ancestors uh, are watching over me. Okay. Absolutely, man. <laughs> Absolutely. That's beautiful. Yeah. I didn't, and I you know, know also, and, and um, with that, uh, it's uh, wonderful to be in the Smithsonian. Um, but what's most important and, and touching for me is that it's in the uh, African American uh, Museum. That's uh, again. I don't know if you've been to the museum yet. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I've been, I've been there. I've been there once, and it was. Um, I didn't get a chance to go to the whole museum, and uh, I was actually on my way, you know, to catch a flight. And I had, but I had time before you know, before the flight. So I went there, and uh, it was just uh, it was just amazing. I was only able to stay for about like three hours, and I only got to like one floor. You know? Yeah, that's what I was about to say. You didn't get off the sec. Oh, you didn't get to the second floor, did you? <laughs> no, I did. I made it to the second floor, man, because that's that's just how impactful it was. Uh, so that's that's pretty amazing, Steve. I want to congratulate you for that, man. That's that's historic too. That's that's one of your uh, marks of your legacy, right there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and you know the beautiful thing is, uh, I I lived in Washington for years, and uh, I have grandchildren, and uh, my youngest son is in Washington. So for them to be able to go down to uh, to the museum and to see what well, that's my granddaddy right there. That's, that's my right granddaddy's work right, right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful, man. That's yeah, beautiful. Man. Well, I, well, this is what we're gonna do. I, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I, and I don't want to get um, this may cut off in about four minutes. I'm not quite sure, but if it if it does, what I want to do is. Um, uh, I like to do when I interview people, we're going to do a word association. So I'm going to throw a word, and you tell me it's the first thing that, that comes to mind. All right? So first word is, the first word is art. Essential. Okay. Yes. Peace. Peace. P-E-A-C-E, peace. Yep, yep, peace. P-E-A-C-E. Not enough of it. If ever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, blackness. I hit the uh, hit the lottery. When, <laughs> when, when God made me black. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, God. Ah. God. Uh... We can't fathom God. How can the creation fathom the creator? So mm -hmm. uh, it, with me, even at our best, trying to quantify, we fall woefully short. Fall oh, short, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and then I want one more word for you, brother. It's gonna be um, woman. Oh. Woman, black woman. I put that on there. <laughs> I I have no words to uh, uh, express fully, but that's you see that's where my work is taking that direction as well. Absolutely. Black women, uh, Queen of Yolande. Uh, there's one piece I did uh, called Dance Sankofa, again, which is featuring black women. Uh, that's another, oh, one of the, uh, my grandmother, a black woman, of course, uh, she's in the Smithsonian also. So that yeah. was really. Wow. Yeah. So, so who, what's her name? Iola McLeod Allen. Her portrait is, uh, is part of the collection as well. In fact, uh, the uh, Smithsonian called me uh, after they had, uh, they came to see the Obama piece when it's called Freedom Journey. And in fact, that piece is the only one in the collection that's a representational uh, painting of Dr. King and uh, President Obama. It's called Freedom Journey. Uh, that one and the two Olympic pieces that they had asked for. Uh, and then they called me. I was on, our, uh, uh, on my way back from New Orleans. And I said, we couldn't stop uh, talking about this painting of your grandma. We were wondering if it could be part of the collection. That sort of that that blew me away. So wow. their uh, mom is up there in uh, in there too. Wow, that's amazing. So you you just got that in your jeans, Steve. 
This is your oh, bloodline. She was saying that, uh, uh, you know, we you asked about black, uh, uh, the Allens and the McLeods, and his, and Ma was out. It was the matriarch. They were about that black when it wasn't right. fashionable to be right. black. Right, it wasn't fashionable, right. Yeah. Right. That's what's and, up. Uh, I was <laughs> fortunate enough to uh, see a photograph of my great, great grandmother that I posted. Uh, she was born in 1868 or 69. And uh, I'm, I'm looking at that. I was, again, how fortunate I am to be able to, to look at her. Wow. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm about black folks. I'm about uh, the uplift of our people, Absolutely. not just here, but in Brazil, back <laughs> where we were talking about. Absolutely. And uh, in Congo, I go back and forth to Congo as well. So. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, we're going to just kind of fast forward here. We didn't get a chance to talk about, uh, we talked about Brazil and, and kind of your connection there and your experience in Brazil. We talked about your um, connection with the Olympics. Um, but we did not go to speak on is uh, the foundation. So let's talk a little bit yeah. more about um, the foundation. So, so, so why? Why and so why? So let's start with that. So why the foundation? Well, first and foremost, every artist needs a foundation because we're not going to be here forever. And I did it to uh, make sure there was some control over where my work went uh, after I leave here. But also, I wanted to uh, to provide uh, something that I didn't have. You asked earlier about artists, you know, artists that I knew, and I didn't know. And even now, most of the time, we know about artists famous artists, they're long gone. And so me as this uh, uh, a black man uh, born in a, a literally a hut, okay, in North Carolina down there in the woods. Uh, and now to have been blessed to have my work where it is, uh, our children need to see us uh, in a, a, a let me share this with you. Uh, you all, uh, most people know Reverend uh, C.T. Vivian, Reverend Dr. Vivian, uh, very, uh, one of Dr. King's uh, lieutenants, main lieutenants back during the day. Okay. Uh, he said one day to me, said, uh, I said, uh, 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 great people are known by their art. I didn't think about that. How many civilizations, ancient civilizations, do we know about simply because of the art, an artifact, something that someone found, uh, the, and so it really puts in perspective the value uh, that an artist, whether a visual artist, whether a musician, uh, whether a sculptor, the, oh, and you as an artist would appreciate this, I'm sure, to be able to take nothing, it just comes out of wherever it comes from. Yeah, right, right. And to be able to put it, to translate it from there, when you really realize that everybody can't do that there's a special gift given to us that we need to share. Absolutely. And so that's, that's, give, that's what it's about, right? I all Absolutely. that talking I was talking, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. And I yeah, really need that's, to stuff. That's beautiful, man. You know, and I think, you know, with that, with that, when you, I was just talking to a young lady today, as a matter of fact, I was, just, I was uh, um, we're talking about, um, She's a, she's an artist and she's young. She's probably in high school and you know she was really had reservations about showing her work. And mm -hmm. you know I told her that's that's, a, that's like a phase all the, all, all artists go through at some point in the beginning. You know they go through even that. now. Well, I do it now. I go through that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's you know, that's but, so nerve nerve wracking for me. Right. Right. Yeah. True. You know, but the conversation I, I had with her was you know when you. You know, you have to think beyond yourself, as you mentioned before. You know, when you think about how your work could be impacting someone else, you know, motivating them or inspiring them, mm -hmm. you, and if you kind of like keep it to yourself, you just you're doing a disservice to to the world, I and mean, you're doing a disservice to yourself. You know what I mean? And and uh, so that was a conversation I, I, I had with her, and that kind of resonated with what you just said um, with the foundation. So. The foundation is a mechanism or a way for you to continue what you're doing now when you are uh, when you are transitioning. Right, and part of uh, when I was doing my time in Brazil, I 
conducted some master classes at the universities and also worked with young people like uh, the school I went to. Uh, they were the students of like 12 to about 16. And, and, and the, with them, they had never seen a black man as an artist. Mm -hmm. And then the work that they saw of mine, black people in an empowered position. Uh, the, it was it's interesting, the uh, class, classroom, when I walked into it, you would have, uh, everything on the wall was uh, Renaissance Europe. Mm. Okay, but the whole the the this, this is Afro Brazil. The body was black, right? <laughs> and so me standing there, they talking, we are talking, and I'll be going back in November. They I've been invited back uh, to that school in particular, and some other things we we can talk about later. Yeah, sure, uh, but, sure. Uh, yeah, it's uh, that. For them to see again, us is—you can't really quantify that. You, you can't. And, uh, many times, I well, a few times I've been uh, in my capacity as uh, official artist for the Olympics for the U.S. or uh, United States, and they knew that the Olympic artist was coming, but they didn't expect it to be me. Was like you? Wow. <laughs> So that's powerful. Just imagine when you when they first saw you, like what the, what was going through their minds, what they what they saw, and there were probably so many different you know feelings and emotions when they saw you. Like wow, this is you can really resonate with that. Yeah, and and this has been in the United States as well. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what's your, what, what's your goal with the foundation? I mean, what are you, what's your um, you know, you kind of talked about the long way to go, you know, but what are, what are some of the things? How can people get involved? How can they support you? Okay. Uh, we have a website, steverallenfoundation.org. Uh, one of our main things is uh, we, uh, we want to provide scholarships for ch uh, people to travel with me. See, these places I go, I'll ask for, uh, do you have a passport? Uh, yeah. Have you been out of the country? Well, where did you go? Well, I've been to, I've been to Jamaica. All that. Well, ain't nothing wrong with that. Jamaica's fine. All that. But right. I asked, but when you go there, then you at the all inclusive place where you be. Right. right. Okay. Right. Yeah, don't leave the property. Right. Right. No, right. And so I want to, uh, uh, to uh, have young people travel uh, with me, us. Uh, one foundation doing great work, but they always go to Europe. Okay. It's a black foundation, but they always go to Europe. So when are you going <laughs> to take our students uh, to home? To right? home. Right. <laughs> and so that is what I'm doing. So when I we go to Brazil, the nation is 54% Afro-Brazilian. That many? Wow. Yeah. And like I say, uh, the, the only nation with more black people in the world is is uh, Nigeria. That's the only country in the world with more black people wow. than Brazil. Wow. And, and so I'd, what's important for me is for us to really recognize who we are as a people. Other people recognize who we are as a people. It seems that we don't really know who we are mm. as a people. Mm. And a lot of that is by design. Mm -hmm. We know that part of our enslavement, uh, part of the vestiges of that enslavement. You notice I don't say slaves because we mm -hmm. weren't we no, mm -hmm. we were enslaved and brought here. Mm -hmm. And so, as part of that, also uh, whether I'm in, when I'm in Brazil, uh, our young brothers and sisters there have this. Well, many of them haven't traveled. They don't have money. The black folks, they are much poorer than the other. The, the, well, the white folks, they love that. Is that, uh, I, is that, is that really, is it, I mean, is it glaringly like obvious, like really noticeable that the, the, the poverty very, level? And it, 
let me let me let me share you the first question that the young people asked me at the school. This is the first question they asked me: Is racism as bad in the United States as it is in Brazil? These are twelve oh. to fourteen year old students ask me that. Wow. Wow. And then, oh, I'm glad we talked about that because I had to see my answers back. <laughs> But this, because they're doing an article on me. But they, these, it surprised me. These young people, and again, uh, seeing themselves depicted uh, artistically, it's always they've been hypersexualized, okay? Or you are the uh, the thug. Yeah. Or uh, they think that uh, uh, many people never go up into the favelas. I've been in there many times. And what, you going there? There's a phenomenon that goes on in Rio. It's called a favela tours. You And what it is is people get on a bus and they go through the favelas and like they're looking at like you going on a safari. Wow. That's a real life thing. Real life thing. Wow. Real, I say, what, so now, uh, so I'm, I'm getting on the bus, projected to go through Hosinia or Mangueira or one of these others, or Vidigal. And so, uh, but I'm protected by the bus and we'll drive through to see how the whole folks, how the folks in the favelas live. Wow. It's not this. Right. That's crazy. That's like that's like taking a bus and just to sightsee you through any hood in the, in the United States. Right. You know? yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. Wow. So I don't know what, you know, the neighborhood. (laughs) Let's take a trip through Harlem. Let's take a trip through uh, in the Raleigh, where I'm from, or in Atlanta, to look at the. Right, right, right. Wow. Yeah. So it's much work for us to do, my brother, in connecting. Absolutely. This is another thing. You know, we speak in English, right? I had this conversation in Rio. I said, we were talking about our enslavement. I said, the, the very fact that I'm speaking English and you speaking Portuguese tells you, what does that tell you about what where we are? What what African language do I know? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, when I yeah. go to Congo, my dear friend, they speak five or six languages. One of my friends, Odette, she speaks eight languages. My sister, Odette, she speaks eight wow. languages. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so this is it opens your it opens your mind. What is yeah. so that's part of the again that purpose too for the foundation is to expose not just the young folk, hopefully, uh some chaperones or mom and daddy want to come or whatever, so we can go and not just go. Uh if we have I'm I'm just talking about Rio because that's where I just returned from. But uh uh, most of us, we come and we down on Coke Cabana. All we know is Coke Cabana and Ebony. Right, right. So we right. we never venture any further away. So, but you so when you went though, people treated you well. Like I mean, you thought you like with a host family or something like that, or wonderful. You know, I love Brazil. I love it, and and one of the reasons I love it is because now the. Afro-Brazilians are really embracing their blackness. They are Mm -hmm. stuff like we did in the 60s. They never had a civil rights movement. Yeah, yeah. So this is kind of like their civil rights revolution, sort of. Right. Right At this time, right now. And so when you get there, uh, you are immersed in that. And sometimes when I, when I, uh, we here at home, it's, uh, I don't know what it is. It's like uh, like we pass it. Sometimes we think we pass that. You know, no. we, no, uh, we I, I think we've been integrated into that burning house that Dr. King was talking about. I was afraid right. that he, yeah. Right, we've gotten comfortable. Gotten comfortable. Right, yeah. And right. even like now we're, we are both, uh, what do we call it? Self quarantine or whatever it is, right? Yeah. And, uh, some of our some people are very afraid. I said, "Well, I'm thinking back about what Grandma and them doing. 
a little more uh, water in the in the soup. Okay, a few more spices. We can all, all we right. can make it. Right. <laughs> as our survival uh, right. muscles have atrophied to a point. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Right. Man, well, this, I guess this, that's part of people sharing some of this old wisdom, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, hey, their their old wisdom is timeless, man. You know, we need more, we need more people listening to our old and respecting our old time wisdom, man. You know, because that never changes, right? I mean, it's yeah. always when we when we go through challenging times, we always go back to the roots. And that's that's at least that's what we should be doing, going back to our roots, going back to you know what what helped us get here in the first place. I'm a big believer of that, and that's a part of you know, what I what I what I teach and I talk about all the time, you know, it's about getting mm-hmm. back to those roots. So like, you know, I think my artwork kind of reflects some of that. Yours definitely reflects that. And a lot of the artists that I that uh that uh that are in ma- mahogany and you know that I that I like personally I just the, the the art speaks to that. Um mm-hmm. so you know um uh Steve it's been it's almost an hour man you know it's it's almost oh, an hour man. For 60 minutes, man. Uh, and we can talk all and all. Yeah, we can talk like, man, I can talk with another four or five hours, man. So we're going to definitely, um, you know, touch base again. And uh, um, uh, thanks, for, thanks for being on this edition of the uh, you know, Black Art and Culture, um, the quarantine edition, I should call it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this yeah. is beautiful, man. This is, I, man, I enjoy talking with you, man. I, I want to talk more with you about the foundation. And uh, uh, what we can do to help, and uh, man, maybe I can join you one of these times that we need to. The next time we go to Brazil, I don't know who knows, man. You know, we'll see. But um, thank you for Keep joining us. Well, we're gonna be doing some things. We'll be announcing. Okay. I'll be uh, putting forth a clip pretty soon. Okay. Uh, of the uh, documentary that was shot of me and my visit while I was there, we'll be doing that, and wow. uh, I will be going back and. October, November. I already had the ticket back. Already. Okay. So. All right. All right. <laughs> well, you had, you went through it. You went through some things. Excuse me. Went through some things while you were down here trying to get come back to the states. So, uh, man, you finally made it. I was watching some of your uh, photo photos that you took, and you know, hearing some of your story about the little incident on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I was thinking about something, man. Steve was going, man. He's going to be excited to sit in his own house and his own bed, his own couch after he finally made it through that journey. So, welcome back, man. Yeah. Welcome back. Thank you. And it's, it's good to be pleasure back. To talk with you. you. Pleasure, pleasure talking really with you. has been mine. Thank you for inviting me. All right, we're going to do it again. All right. All right, just let me know. I'm All here. Right. All right, Steve. All right, All right. Peace, Thank you, bro. Peace.